Alright guys, we are back with part two of our series slash tutorial on logic gates and the magic and mystery that comes with them. In the last video we learned some very basic logic gates. They were AND, OR, NOT, and XOR. In this video we're going to learn a very practical application of them. But before we do that, we have to do a little tiny bit of some math theory. If you recall, we talked about very, very simple stuff in math where we add two numbers together and we talked about the kind of results that we get, okay? So in this case, our answer is 18. Now, you see we had this little guy up here, which we called our carry out from this column, okay? So we have each thing is divided up into columns and each column has a sum, which is what follows immediately in it. Then it has a carry out, okay? And the carry out becomes the carry in for the next column. So if we look at a two column example, 56 plus 14, six and four gives us a 10. So this carry out, which originated from this column, now becomes the carry in for this column. Sorry for the confusing John Madden arrows, but basically what it means is each time you have a carry out, it becomes a carry in for a new column. But if it's your final column, like it was over here, that's just your final carry out for the entire equation, okay? So this is going to be very important for us. This actually is going to help us very, very much when it comes to building a calculator, which is exactly what I intend to do in this video and maybe expand on it in the next video. So let's take a look. What if we were to build a circuit that was based on adding together two numbers? A and B. We called the answer S for sum, okay? So let's look at all the possible answers that we could have, and I think we're actually going to need another output for this, and we'll see why. Let's write all the possible A's and B's that we could have. There's always going to be four of them if you have two numbers. Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. One plus zero is one and one plus one doesn't fit in one space. We need a carry out. So for all these, the carry out is zero. But here, one plus zero is one zero, so the sum is zero and carry out is one. Traditionally, these columns are written the other way around, but this is just uh, to illustrate. So we can see it's pretty simple to add two numbers together, but we always have this carry out right here. So what happens if you're adding two numbers together but you have a carry out from a previous column. Well, if you're just using this two number system that we have right here, you can't account for that. So we actually need to have three columns. We need to have the two numbers we're adding together and a carry in. And this is the way things are done in the real world. So what we have here before we added the carry in, this is called a half adder. It adds, adds two one bit numbers together, but it doesn't take into account a carry in. So let's draw our truth table, it's called, for a full adder, which takes into account this carry in. And after that, we can go to logic simulator. So let's see here. If we had carry in plus, we'll call them X and Y this time, X and Y, and then the answer will have a carry out and a sum. And if you read the number uh, from this way, the way that you do with numbers, like this is 110, not 11, or in binary, this is uh, six, not three. So this will be the way this is written. Uh, so let's draw, let's draw our table here. So we got zero, zero, zero. We're writing every possible combination of digits here. And I like to do it just counting upwards in binary. Zero, one, 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 zero, zero. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. One, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, if you have three inputs, you should have eight possible outputs. So let's just very simply go along each row and add up the numbers to get our carry and sum. Zero plus zero plus zero, so our first one here, carry zero, sum zero. Next one, zero plus zero plus one, sum is one, carry is zero. The next one, same story. Ah, but this row right here, we have one plus one, which we know is two, or one zero. 
Next row, 0, 1 again. Uh, the next row is 1, 0 again. That next row is 1, 0 again. And our final row is actually going to give us 1, 1, because 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, and in binary, we know that 3 is equal to 1, 1, <laughs> which is not 11. Not 11. Okay, my handwriting is awesome in MS Paint, isn't it? What? Okay, so we can actually use these three guys on the left here as our inputs, and uh, these two guys on the right as our outputs. And I don't mean guys as in men, I just mean individuals. I'm not trying to be sexist. So, we just need to draw right equations for these, and then we can actually figure out what gates we need to do them. And uh, if you look... Let me just one second. Okay, we're back. Sorry, I had to pull up uh, my equations to make sure I get this right. So the careful observer will notice that the sum column is only ever true it, when there are an odd number of inputs. Look, this row is true because there's an odd number of inputs that are true. This one is true because there's an odd number of inputs that are true. And the same for this one and the same for this one. Here there's three, all the others are one input. We learned in the last video that the XOR gate, which is drawn like this, or oftentimes a box with a circle with, an, with a T in the middle or a cross, this is also an XOR, exclusive OR. And since we have three inputs, uh, our sum, very simply, and I'll just write down here, S is equal to all three inputs exclusively ORed together. So CI OR, this is the symbol for OR when you're doing equations, OR X OR Y. So sum, very simple. Now the uh, carry out is a little bit more complicated. I'm not going to go through the entire proof of it, but if you look on Wikipedia under adders, you can see very simply how it's done. We, by going through each of the columns and then simplifying, we could just write these as min terms, but it gets rather big. So let's just write then uh, the way Wikipedia tells us we should, just so that we can move on to the fun part, which is the cedar. And um, so basically carry out is gonna be equal to xy this is x and y, by the way, plus, meaning or, the carry in anded with x exclusive or y. So anytime I multiply something together, so times, I guess, here, let me, uh, if we have multiplication, that's an and gate, and if we have addition, that's an or gate. These are just common notations in uh, computer science. And that's because if you look at an OR truth table, you'll see that, uh, I'm gonna draw one real quick. Zero, one, one, zero, one, one. Anything, if you do, uh, X, we'll call this one W. If you add them together, zero, one, 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 just add them all together uh, and don't let it overflow, then it's, it's equal to the sum. And if you do multiplication, then only the last one is true. So, pretty simple. Anyways, so these are the two equations that we're going to bring into Cedar with us. And um, and we're only using three gates here, exclusive OR, AND, and OR. We don't need any NOT gates. We don't need anything else. And uh, so, let's hop to it, shall we? I'm going to cut the video here, and I'll meet you all in Cedar. Okay, we're back in everyone's favorite simulator. So we're going to build our uh, circuit here. First, I like to set up the inputs, and then we'll do the outputs. And feel free to follow along. I'm going to do our inputs first. I'm going to label them so that we don't get mixed up. Um, our first one, I'm going to do X. And then this one will be Y. And finally, down here, oops. We'll have the carry in. Now, once we have um, 
our basic unit built, we can actually chain these guys together and see how to make a full-fledged calculator, which is what we'll be doing next. So let's add in some LED indicators for our outputs so that we can check that our circuit is working properly once we get it built. So we'll have the top one will be the sum and the bottom one will be the carry out. This will be read from uh, bottom to top if you want to read the number in binary, okay? Where the LED state is either one or zero. So let's get cracking. Let's do our sum circuit first because it's really, really easy. We're gonna take, um, I know this program uses multiple uh, input exclusive OR gates, but in practice, those are not too common. So we're just gonna use a normal two input one. So the first one is going to be exclusive OR of X and Y, and then we're going to exclusive OR this with C in. And uh, that will give us the exclusive OR of all three. So just like this, and then we know this is equal to the sum. So, very good. And I like to make my wires look all pretty and straight and not intersect each other. So the next thing we have to do is uh, we have to build the carry out term, which is a little more complicated. First, we have an AND gate for, it looks like, yeah, we have to do one for X and Y. So we'll take one from X, go here, one from Y, oops, not quite like that, from Y. And I'm gonna rearrange these lines so that we can see where they're actually going. Okay, and then we have to, oops, sorry, I'll make this a little more visible. So we have X and Y being anded here. And then we need to and together the carry in, which is right here. Oops. Okay, so we'll drag this guy out. Look real nice. Okay, the carry in gets anded to X exclusive or Y. Now you see we already did this once, so we don't need to build a separate gate for it. We can actually pick it off from right here. Oops, pick it off from right there and bring it down to the bottom like so. Okay, so now these ands get ORed together. That's the uh, plus part of the equation. And uh, so the plus is just an or, the OR gate of the two ands. And this actually becomes our carry out. So if everything went well, we should be able to test some example cases. So right now we're already simulating and we see that the sum of zero plus zero plus zero is zero, zero, and that's right. Let's add in a one, the sum is one, that's right. Let's add one plus one is two, that's right. One plus one plus one is three, that's right. Okay, let's just try some various ones of two, one, two, two, yeah. Looks like they all work. So this is our full adder circuit. This is how these are built in the real world at the most simple level. And it's not all that complicated. You can build one of these with about, uh, well, like 50 cents worth of electronics, it's really cheap. I might do a video where I show you how to build one in real life. I have all the parts that I need. Um, so, what do we do next? Well, adding together three one-bit numbers isn't all that useful in computers, is it? What we would really need to do is make a copy of this and like so, and add them together where the carry out of one is the carry in of the next one. So we would delete this pull it down to here and uh, I believe that's all we need to do for that and then this will be the final carry out so let's try that I'm not sure how well it's gonna work for us right now we have zero in a sum of zero let's do one plus one yeah that's not quite working oh wait no this is two plus one so that's three that's working two plus zero is two let's do one plus one uh, this makes, or sorry, this is two plus two, so that gives us four, plus one is five, plus another one is six, plus another one is seven. Yeah, so this is working. Now, if you're using Cedar, or if you're doing these by hand, there's a really, really great feature in this where you can actually go to add and compare, number six, and there's a full adder chip, like here. You see we have our two inputs, X and Y, our sum, carry out and carry in. Now, if you wanna make a very, very large 
uh, calculator, all you have to do is drag a whole bunch of these in and connect them properly. So let's make a 4-bit adder, oops, which we have, and we'll need some inputs and outputs. So we'll have quite a few. We'll need two inputs for each gate, and then actually three inputs for the first one because of our carry-in. But when you're doing addition, you don't need a carry-in on the first block. Carry-in on the first block is used for subtraction, which we've seen in previous videos. So we're going to need five LEDs because our answer can be five bits. Your answer when you're doing addition can always be one bit more than uh, what you have as far as number of inputs goes. So we'll just hook up all of our X's and Y's. And again, our answer is going to be the biggest number on the left and the smallest number on the right, like you would real, read a real number. Okay. And we'll hook up the all the sums get hooked up to LEDs. And then the carry ins and carry outs get connected to each other. And I'll show you how. And our, oh, and our final carry out also gets an LED so that we can read those numbers. So carry in, carry out, just go like this. Okay, and then our first carry in will leave zero. And if you want to, you can actually put a ground. This just represents a permanent zero, so nothing can happen to it. So let's do some examples. Uh, very simple, right now we have zero plus zero, and that's zero. Uh, if we do um, one plus one, can't seem to click it. Hang on a second. Okay. Gotta drag this line out. Okay. One plus one is two. Perfect. Let's try another example. Let's do four, which is one zero zero, plus three, which is one zero. Oh, sorry. This is eight all the way out here. This one's worth eight. So eight plus three is 11, which is what we have. Let's try two big numbers. Let's do um, seven, which is one, one, one. 7, oops, I clicked one off. Come on now. These wires are in the way. Okay. 1, 1, 1, 7 plus 8. How about 8? If we click 8, that gives us 15, which is uh, 1, 1, 1, 1. Now let's try to get the overflow to go. Let's do 7 plus 10, which is 8 plus 2. Aha! Our last one comes out. And then we have this one here. 7 and 10 is, of course, 17. This bit out here is worth 16, and this one here is worth 1. These are things that you'll learn if you watch my binary tutorials. I definitely recommend you watch that before you see this. This will definitely confuse you. So you can see our calculator's working. So in our next episode, I want us to turn this into an adder and subtractor that we can select using a selector chip, which I'll go ahead and show you. We're going to use a multiplexer, which is this guy. It lets you pick between uh, two inputs using a selection line. They're very cool. And from there, we'll get into uh, different circuits with memory and other lots of fun things that I don't want to spoil now. So if you have any suggestions of things that you'd like to see, please write in. And if you have any cool stuff that you've made, definitely make me a video response or send me an email. And... Good luck with the logic simulator. If you haven't gotten it yet, I'll put the link in the description. And if you didn't watch the first video, you're going to want to go and do that. <laughs> so thanks for watching and stay logical.